We are in middle position with the stack size of about $375, and we pick up pocket eights. I open a $15, I end up getting two callers, the hijack and the cutoff. We had three ways to a flop of 585. Bink! Here is one of those situations where you almost always have to check because you have the board crushed. There are not too many hands your opponents can have when you flop this strong. If you ever bet and both players fold, you look like an absolute idiot. The only way you are getting someone to raise here is if they have a five. I check, player checks, but now the button decides to bet $40. So today we are trying a new highly strategic move at the table. We are going to change our table image to just got done cutting grass this morning, went and shot nine holes with the boys, a little dad mode, you know, so uh, we'll see if I can't uh, help us exploit some players and get our bluffs through. We're going to play with 1-3, no limit hold'em at Hollywood Casino at the Meadows. Let's get into that action. Or as a dad would say, come on guys, let's play some poker. So we bought in for 350, but now I have a stack of 450 when we get dealt Jack 10 of spades. I raise a $12 under the gun. There's three callers, cutoff button and big blind, and the flop is 569 with two clubs. Big blind checks. This doesn't connect with my under the gun range and three players. It's likely someone flops something they want to continue with or big blind could be possibly trapping. I check. The cutoff and button also check. The turn is a 10 of diamonds. And the big blind leads now for half pot with a bet of $22. Pretty interesting. I don't see much value in raising here with top pair. Pretty standard to call and evaluate the river. I call. The cutoff also calls. And now we're three ways to a river of the ten of clubs. Giving us trips but also bringing in the flush. Now the big blind leads again for $40 which is one third pot size bet. I take a look at the player behind me and he clearly is motioning to fold which is good news. With this bet sizing, he has to be fairly strong. No way he ever bets one pair type hands here. And this could be a straight, not that it matters because that has his beat anyways. But for this small amount with trips, curiosity equity gets us and we just have to make the call. So we go ahead and call. The button folds and the big blind shows us the bad news of king six of clubs for the flush and we lose. Poker tip number 99, slapping your cards together after being beat, conveys to the opponent your anger for their luck box lifestyle. Next we make a terrible blunder that I'm still trying to repent for. As we're reaching to put our big blind out, our knuckle, which I have since amputated, hits a pitched card. Exposing the small blind's ace of hearts and I feel so bad. Tell me the truth in the comments, would you guys have been pissed at me? But anyways, with one less finger, let's try to turn this rough start of a session around. None of these hands seem suitable. We are in middle position with the stack size of about $375, and we pick up pocket eights. I open to $15. I end up getting two callers, the hijack and the cutoff. We had three ways to a flop of 585. Bink! Here is one of those situations where you almost always have to check because you have the board crushed. There are not too many hands your opponents can have when you flop this strong. If you ever bet and both players fold, you look like an absolute idiot. The only way you are getting someone to raise here is if they have a five. I check, player checks, but now the button decides to bet $40. Once again, not really much to do here but call. If he is bluffing, we want him to continue to do so on later streets. So I call, the hijack folds, the turn is a jack. Once again, can't really do much. I could lead out here, but it just seems like I might as well play it as if I'm bluff catching. So on occasion, a player depending, you could donk lead here, I guess, but that's more of a rare occurrence, I think. So I check again, and this time he checks back. The river is another five. This card doesn't worry me as much. The only hand that beats me is pocket jacks or five, and I don't think he ever has a five here. He wouldn't have checked back turn, but if he has it, so be it. I choose the lead for $50 here as I want to call, and I don't want to go too large with my sizing, scaring off any smaller pairs or any ace highs he may hero call with. 
Targeting a jack would make me go with a larger sizing as it's hard to fold, but I went with this sizing for, I think, best results of getting all of his range to call. He calls and we win. Quick question all you poker players out there, we get dealt jack eight suited in the big blind and it folds around in the small blind and he has to chop. I'm totally fine with the chop 7 plus handed and will mostly always defer to what the small blind wants to do, but what do you guys do? Always play, always chop, or just depends? Let me know in the comments. We fold a lot in this session. The next hand we're going to go over, blinds are $1, $3, $6 with a $6 late position straddle. We get dealt ace of clubs, king of spades. The small blind and big blind complete because they have to act first. And I like to size a little larger here considering the blinds have essentially doubled. Add in two callers out of the blinds and I don't really want to price any other players in behind me. So I raised to 35, about 6x, hoping to just get one caller or no callers and everyone folds and we pick up this $18 pot. I'll be honest, there is a lot of folding we did this session. I took a bathroom break and before I could get the camera set up, we went a hand of five, six of clubs out of the big blind when I hit a straight. Sadly, I did not get it recorded. Our stack is now about $535, but let's get into this physical tells analysis. Against the gentleman with the arrow pointing at him. Let me just preface this with the fact that earlier this gentleman check raised jammed all in with ace king high on a board of 893. And on the button, we get dealt pocket eights. So the hand starts with the villain in middle position just calling $3. There are two folds. Now on the button it seems pretty standard to raise here, so we go ahead and make it $15 to go. The small blind and big blind fold, and now it's on to the villain. He thinks for a minute before making the string call. I'll speed it up for you. Now we are heads up to a flop that comes 776 rainbow. That's a pretty good flop for our hand. We have a backdoor draw and an overpair. The villain, unsure of his hand, double checks it. Now, typically without a flusher on board, rechecking his hand most likely means he does not have a pair, as it would be pretty easy to remember that information. Now the villain, Donk, leads with a slightly above pot size bet of $40. This has piqued my interest, so I just start to eye his stack to see how much he has behind and take a moment to try to figure out what hands he would Donk lead here out of position into a razor with. Before we can even say or ask about a stack, this gentleman starts talking. 100, 200, 100, now there's a quarter I forgot I had. Whatever there, 175, 275, about 290. So we saw him fumbling with his chips, a normal sign of anxiety, and add in he's tripping over his words, less likely it's a sign of excitement and more likely a sign of nervousness. The real count is about $250. I feel as I am clearly ahead here, but we don't want to scare him off and just calling here with his bluffing range puts him in a very awkward position on turns and I'd like to see how he reacts. So I call and the turn is a beautiful two of clubs. And now he starts breathing heavy. Another sign of his heart rate being up. And now he checks different than other times with a quick harder double tap on a table, telling me he just wants to see a river for free or very cheap. At this point, I'm putting him on two overs, ace king, ace queen, king queen, maybe a six, something like ace six, five, six, four, six suited. With our read at this point, I'm sure I'm betting for value, so I bet $75. He then checks his cards again, telling me that he is very unsure and uncomfortable about his hand, and decides on a call. Unfortunately, the river card is the king of spades, bringing in many of the hands he could have that would be calling us if he thinks we are bluffing. But he checks again, most likely saying he doesn't have a king. We can't bet this for value anymore because we almost never get called by a worse hand once the king comes. So we check back and he shows us jack six. Let me tell you right now, there is no better feeling in poker than stone cold reading your opponent, being correct and winning the hand. So we take this decent sized pot down. We win one more small pot with king nine of clubs, then fold a bunch of hands before racking up and heading to the cage. Cashing out $659 for a profit of $309. I think dad mode worked. I am looking like a cool uncle right now. 
but I wanted to say thanks to all my subscribers and everybody that's been watching recently. I said I was gonna start with a bankroll and we're gonna keep track. So we're gonna start that number out 5,000. We're currently at 5,309 after our winning session. And I also have a few goals. Clearly the first one being that we are profitable for the year. Second is to try to double the bankroll to 10K. And the third will be try to run it up to 50K before the end of the year. Thank you guys for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. It helps me out a tremendous amount and it's free for you. No cost whatsoever. Free 99.